some manifold. And if we evaluate the hyperbolic volume, this will correspond to the uh, asymptotic behavior of the whole three polynomials for the large representations. And there is a generalization for quantum hyperbolic volume, which can be evaluated in this, in, in this manner. <clears throat> so that, that, that uh, these coefficients uh, can be called uh, the operators which act on the space of Hopfler polynomials. So we can, we can rewrite it as some operator which acts on R equals zero. And this operator is called uh, a polynomial. So now what was surprising for us that this structure goes beyond the twist knots. And actually it goes goes far <laughs> beyond the twist knots. sufficiently large R, R and then to guess the general formula. So there are two symmetric representations, that's R and S, which correspond to R and S. And the formula is symmetric because this is actually symmetric, although it's, it is drawn in <laughs> quite, quite different form. And also there is a three-component link, which is called the Borman rings. And it also has the form of Q hypergeometric series. Oh, there is a yeah. notation for D. Sorry. Sorry for that. And DI is actually AQI, which is AQI minus 1 over QI. Otherwise, the formulas get longer. <laughs> That's so this allowed us to apply the q algorithm and construct the uh, a-polynomials in that case. And actually, the, uh, why we were doing that and we were interested? Because there, is a there was a conjecture from the string theory on the asymptotic behavior of a-polynomials. And this way, we evaluated this directly and confirmed that conjecture. Okay. In special cases? Uh, no, the conjecture was about the Whitehead and Bermia. Oh, it was specific? Yeah, yeah. It so was you moved the, the conjecture? It, it, it was the specific, right. Oh, well, okay. a, actual, actually, uh, it was... Blah, blah. Uh, actually, he's talking about the, the general approach, but however, I, did, I, I, did, I didn't <coughs> under, understand what, what he talks about in general case. That's, uh, there is no explicit formula in standards. Uh, and we actually evaluated much much more than we evaluated the whole series of, of links 
in all symmetric representations that how we have nothing to compare with, <laughs> so we just have a formula. <laughs> okay, and uh, what I want this, uh, especially to talk about is that this approach, the, uh, there should be some generalization of this approach uh, beyond the symmetric and anti-symmetric representations. We know that uh, if we consider uh, the diagram of that form, it is no longer a Q hypergeometric series. For example, this is the this is the representation which distinguishes the mutant node, which I was showing on the first slide. But, however, uh, something can be said about the uh, whole planar nodes in this case, and if we rewrite it. In terms of pairs of the elements of Q hypergeometric series, there is still some structure. I cannot say more except for this formula, but anyone who has seen the Holmes polynomials for figure 8 in this representation know that it's a kind of a page. So when it's written this way, <laughs> it, it uh, it is actually, uh, it, 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 it cannot happen just accidentally. <laughs> it must be some structure beyond that. So, uh, we hope that uh, there should be some generalization of uh, the structure, possibly related with Havana homology or something else, uh, which goes beyond the symmetric and asymmetric representation. And I will just take five minutes to talk more about the twist knots in symmetric and anti-symmetric representation. So there, there is a famous property uh, of the colored Holmes polynomials. Oh of the yeah of the colored Holmes polynomials that if we take the second variable equals to one. This is the special case of that polynomials. And consider any diagram then this is actually the polynomial in the fundamental raised to the number uh, of boxes of the diagram. So if we look at that formulas, which is the Q hypergeometric series, we will notice that here is the binomial coefficient, the Q binomial coefficient. So these formulas provide an actual Q deformation of this type of formulas. Okay, so I guess I will stop here because before everybody get bored. <laughs> so thank you for your attention. Thank you for beautiful, very very lucid. Uh, so, questions? we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, I, I know uh, the Ophelides did something. Uh, so what you did with extension, what he did with the graph model, uh, the this, analogs uh, are different. Ophelides, uh, as far as I know, he worked with uh, the symmetric case. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, the twi twisted knots. These were the known formulas for the twisted knots. And he constructed the uh, the idea of the a polynomials from this Q hypergeometric series, and their relation uh, their relation relation actually belongs to Gerfelides, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, there were no any formulas for general symmetric or anti-symmetric representation of the uh, links. That's that's. And the idea to put numbers out. This is a new idea. Uh, this is mine. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and from and not from my point of view, but from an orthodox mathematician point of view, is it completely rigorous or is uh, some empirical guessing uh, floating point? No, no. This computation actually is rigorous because yeah. if you evaluate this in uh, complex in numbers, that the, uh, the this is not only the polynomial, this is the polynomial with integer coefficients, which yeah. I didn't set. set. And if you get the Fourier table, 
if you get the sufficient the uh, sufficiently large for your table, then you will see that this everything is integer. This is this cannot happen accidentally. Yeah. This always happens for a reason. That's that that's why it's a rigorous proof. You always get a rigorous result. And also, you can always test the uh, uh, some special cases which are known. For example, these polynomials, of course, are known for any representation. So if you mess up in, in, in one coefficient, this, this, there is no chance that this will factor in, <laughs> in, the, in that sense. So, yeah. so, so you programmed all of us to do all these calculations? Yeah. Or what, what did you use to program it? What language? Uh, Mathematica. Okay. And for evaluation, uh, I've used the uh, QSPARS package of CUDA, so it's, it's, it's in C. Is, is it open to fetch the full thing for the beta nodes, not that they're not equal? So you think it's off? Should you be able to do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Nah, well, I believe that there is only technical issues, like, because evaluations should take, like, three weeks or something. Yeah, maybe you need a better something better than yeah. No, uh, actually, the... the what? A numeric language, like Lambda? No, no, no. The, the, the most hard computations are did in CUDA, so oh. in CUSPARS, so it's quite, it's quite efficient. Oh. So the mathematics is used to generate the uh, T matrices and so yeah. on. It's, it's, it, it's, oh, but the it's, numeric is then? And numeric is loaded into CUDA and then evaluated. So it, when, when, when there is a GPU, it, it is far, far efficient. <laughs> He thinks it's hope uh, in a few years to be able to actually compute the monthly point numbers for this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think for a year, I think that there will be a month that I will compute them. But usually, I, I get stuck at some point that there is not enough, uh, not enough. Uh, Not enough digits, for example, because there, there is actually it's it's a tricky uh, <laughs> it's a tricky part. Uh, when I said that we substitute the uh, real values, but the point is that actually when we work uh, until the very end, it's not a polynomial but a rational function, and it has poles, and so you have to choose that contours to not go near any poles. Otherwise, you will you will get. <laughs> your evaluations messed up with <laughs> and so on. That. Oh, so you have delicate issues. Yeah, so there are a lot of delicate issues and uh, but I, I I don't I don't see any principal issues. So that's practically uh, I've evaluated them in a lot of points. Yes. I've evaluated them in a lot of points. Uh, for example in a row and I reconstructed the uh, powers of A which uh, enter the polynomial, but when I when, when I go to the full table, that's thanks again. <laughs>